The tornado has not been confirmed, but there is damage out in this area. As you can see, even on my jacket, that snow is definitely piling up. It's coming down at a moderate pace. Now, a lot of the cancellations of flights that we've been seeing here have actually been because of the weather conditions in other cities. The investigation continues into exactly what happened here at Motel 6 overnight. This location is just off of Route 97. Erie County Coroner Lyle Cook says the body of a man was discovered inside the main lobby. Sean and Jill, it was a daunting task to dig out cars. Even when the snow first fell, you needed more than a brush, but now you'll likely need more than a shovel for vehicles like the one behind me. But with the race against time and the risk of people getting towed and ticketed, they're looking for help wherever they can get it. We are at the very top of the Bicentennial Tower. You know, we started from the bottom, now we're here, but that was with an elevator. But now I'm going to rappel down, and I'm just one of nearly 40 people that are going to be doing this. The others have raised up to $1,000 to be a part of this. So we're going to get started. The hardest part for doing this is taking the first step, and that's what they've been doing at the Achievement Center. They serve 3,400 people and those children take the first step with their challenges and their goals. So we're going to go ahead and get started and start rappelling down. I've had some training. Yeah, drop your right hand down. And uh, here we go. Nice job, Ron. And of course, Facebook isn't the only platform buying for your attention and storing your information. Hey, Google, where am I? Here you are, JET24, FOX66, yoriori.com. Police and fire are responding to a crash outside of McDowell High School. The two-car accident involves six students celebrating prom. <laughs> One of the teens was driving under the influence. Mill Creek police say that one of the students has died. But thankfully, this is a simulation. Students are helping first responders demonstrate the dangers of distracted and impaired driving. The search is underway for 28-year-old Samantha Sayers of Seattle. The Girard native hasn't been heard from since she went hiking Wednesday morning at Vesper Peak. That's about 75 miles northeast of downtown Seattle. Her car was found parked at the trailhead, but no sightings of Sayers. The Snohomish County Sheriff's Office says there's upwards of 100 search and rescue crew members looking on the ground, in the air, and with the help of canines. Lisa Sayers left Gerard on Saturday to be a part of the effort to find her daughter. And we're working with somebody um, on our own who's helping us crack her phone and try to find out where she is. Lisa Sayers says she's in agony but told us to share the video that she posted in hopes of getting the word out. Let people know that Samantha's out there and still needs to be found. That's what one of Sayers former high school teachers is doing. It came as kind of a shock um, when you know anybody in this capacity and then certainly you know when you realize the severity of it what could happen. Sarah's graduated from Collegiate Academy in 2008 when she was known as Samantha Steinbaugh. Samantha is a really smart young lady and um, as I understand it you know very very experienced at hiking so you know we're just hoping and praying that you know she's out there and they get her get her back safe and sound. A hope that is giving Sarah's family strength. My fear is that it may be too late <laughs> and my little girl's still out there <laughs> since August 1st. But we're holding on to hope and faith that she's still okay. We saw the water rise and like to be like up to here and then it eventually blew up so much rain came down that the manhole that's what you could see in the background. Debbie Pike, who lives in the 500 block of East 30th Street, filmed this dramatic footage with her phone on Saturday afternoon. But neighbors say it's something they've seen many times. The water comes up through the pavement. Uh, it comes down through the yards. Uh, and obviously it runs down the streets. On November 5th, torrential rains caused flash flooding. The water was so high that the front wall of this house caved in. Gary Hoffman was constantly calling people to get this checked out. And it, it just was constant, and then he died. 59-year-old Gary Hoffman and his brother-in-law, 55-year-old Michael McGurn, drowned in the basement. City of Erie Public Works Director Dave Mubbahill says they're actively investigating why the problem continues to happen even after a 2005 stormwater retention project. I mean, I understand their frustration, and, and uh, we're frustrated as well, because we thought that back when we did the project in 2005 that it had been resolved. Mulvey Hill says the solution could require installing a line that's larger than the current 48-inch pipe or finding a way to reduce the flow of stormwater. But in the meantime, the city has made no changes to prevent this neighborhood from flooding again. And residents say they worry every time it storms. Please, before something else happens, I mean, those two deaths, that is tragic. That will never, ever forget that happening. But something else is going to happen. This street is like sick it down.